So I'm going to introduce now our next light lightning talk, Topher White. Topher is the CEO of Rainforest Connection, a nonprofit that uses AI to build bioacoustics monitoring platforms and fight illegal deforestation and help conservation efforts around the world. Um, I have to say personally that every time that I try to get a hold of Topher, he is somehow in a new jungle on a different continent, <laughs> so quite literally. Um, so I'm excited to hear him share what he's been up to. Welcome, Topher. Thank you all very much. OK, so we're going to start by taking you into the rainforest. Oh, yeah, there we go. OK, turn it up a little bit. OK, so in the summer of 2011, I visited the rainforest of Borneo in Indonesia for the very first time. And as you can kind of tell, it's this overwhelming sound of the forest that strikes you the most. There's this cacophony of noise all the time, but there's some things that stick out occasionally. You have this hornbill, a big bird. You have these cicadas. And you have these, uh, these gibbons, it's amazingly apes, it isn't like large apes, they sing to each other from a great distance. It's incredible. <laughs> so this place that I was visiting actually was a gibbon reserve where they rehabilitate gibbons uh, to release them back into the wild. But I didn't realize when I visited there is that they actually were spending a lot of their resources trying to re um, protect this entire area from illegal loggers on the outskirts. And they had three full-time guards who were actually guarding the reserve. Um, and they were, their job was to go out and sort of go look for chainsaws on the, on the outskirts. And there was actually chainsaws behind the sound of that forest the entire time. But the cacophony of noise makes it very, very hard to pick that out. And so they're having to have people go out and kind of look around uh, and find it. So look, I think we can all agree that trying to stop illegal logging, trying to stop the destruction of the forest is important. We've heard about it for quite a while. So how do we actually stop illegal logging? Well, here's the solution, right? The moment a chainsaw goes off in the forest, the sound is picked up by a device up in the tree. It goes through the, a network in the cloud that sends an alert to people on the ground, the rangers, and they're like, what? And they jump on their motorcycles and they get out there and they catch the loggers on the spot in this super realistic rendition of exactly what happens <laughs> in the forest. This does rely upon some device up in the trees. Well, we decided that old phones are a pretty good way to do that. There's actually cell phone service in a lot of the forest that's out there. Phones are pretty awesome computers. Thank you, Google. Uh, there's a really great developer ecosystem around it. We can put them in boxes with solar panels and a microphone. They can hear sounds pretty far away. And this becomes a really great way to use old tech tech that's thrown away by the hundreds of millions every year uh, to listen to the forest. Because as you sort of heard earlier, sound is that really, it's the fabric of what's there. Sound is the forest in some of these places. So this is me putting one together uh, in the garage in San Francisco. This isn't an obligatory step in any sort of uh, startup, is putting it together in the garage. Um, so uh, got that. This is one up on a tree uh, in the forest. But again, building something in San Francisco doesn't really help you too much. So taking it back to Indonesia, this is years ago, took it back to uh, Sumatra. And on the second day, we put it up in trees. On the second day, we picked up the sounds of, uh, of chainsaws um, and sort of, you know, with these rangers out there, jumped on their motorcycles, and we got out there to try and stop them. This is when we got to the uh, edge of the place where the logging was. I've been in the forest for like less than half a week, and I'm kind of wondering whether this was the best idea in the world. Um, not really sure what's happening next, but that guy starts moving, so I got to move. And uh, getting up over the hill to where the loggers are. <laughs> Sometimes things move so fast, you just got to go with it. Um, and then actually they were able to stop and intervene and stop the loggers. Um, this is an example of how if you can get there quickly and there's the right people who can actually intervene, uh, you can actually make a big difference. And they were able to, uh, to keep logging happening in this area ever again. This was a very um, small reserve, really only about 200 hectares, but it was the first example we ever tried it uh, and it already had worked. The way we were doing it at the time, who can hear the chainsaw? Yeah, it's pretty, pretty obvious. Uh, at this time we were using non-AI be able to pick out the sounds of chainsaws. This is not uh, a hugely uh, difficult endeavor at the time. But again, it already had worked a little bit in the field. Let's back up for a second and talk about like the rainforest in general. Because we all kind of heard about saving the rainforest for the longest time out there. And there's many other things that sort of affect our, our consciousness these days, like climate change. But it turns out that destruction of forests is almost a fifth of all the carbon emissions every year, more than all the transport put together, cars, trucks, planes, ships combined. None of that adds up to as much as deforestation in terms of carbon output. And so 
It also turns out that up to 90% of all the logging in the rainforest is illegal. If it's illegal, there's a mandate to stop it. And if there's a mandate to stop it, this could be the fastest, cheapest way for us to fight climate change uh, today. And logging itself is not actually going to cut all the forest down, but logging, illegal logging especially, is so profitable that it's actually what creates these roads. They'll go in there and they'll, uh, they'll take out the big trees and they'll get it out on these roads because they can make so much money from it. And then once the road is there, it actually leads to wholesale destruction of the forest. If you can stop the logging, you can stop the roads. If you can stop the roads, you can stop the wholesale destruction. And that's why it could be the fastest, cheapest way for us to fight climate change um, as it stands. But you know, again, let's actually talk about what this looks like in the field. So let's go to Brazil, uh, to, uh, to this indigenous territory. This is like an ocean deforestation with these islands and pretty intact forests. These are indigenous territories, areas that are actually controlled by the tribes. Um, this area here is about the size of Yosemite National Park. It's pretty large. It's the Tembe uh, Reserve, where they live. This is the Tembe. There's about 1,500 of them left, uh, sort of tasked with living and uh, protecting an area of 15, uh, you know, basically the size of Yosemite. Um, and this entire purple area in 2014 is controlled by illegal loggers, settlers, and drug cartels. And just going from one town to the next, uh, any given time, they'd run across these fully stocked you know, trucks full of wood, well arms, uh, really, really very large scale operations. And again, there's not that many of them to be able to, to stop it. All they can really do here is kind of book it out of there as fast as possible. Um, so the Tenbe themselves realized that this is an existential threat to, uh, to what they have going for them. Uh, so they banded together and got 30 rangers, 30 to protect an area the size of Yosemite National Park. Um, this is, again, what, it's like, what it looks like for them in the field. Who can hear the chainsaw? Thank you. Excellent. This is pretty good. This is actually the point at which we started using TensorFlow, an AI platform to be able to pick out the sounds of chainsaws. Um, but again, it's not always this close. This is probably a distance of about 500 meters or so. Um, what really matters is when you start protecting an area this big, you have to look for the very, very subtle things. So who can hear the chainsaw now? All right, that guy hears it. He hears it. All right, still, it is very, very subtle. It's not sort of something you would notice. And so this is, the, this is a really important use of AI to be able to pick out the subtle things in nature that people themselves wouldn't actually hear. And even so, no one's going to be listening to these streams all the time. So in a situation like this, uh, the Tembe themselves were able to scramble. It took some time uh, to get out there, to wait at the end of the road, to be able to catch these trucks on their way out. And waiting at the end of the road were a lot of guys like this guy, who did their own things to those trucks, <laughs> as well as the rest of the equipment. And uh, yeah. This is the type of thing that's necessary. There's not a lot of government enforcement in these areas. These groups are the ones standing between uh, the destruction of the forest and, um, and the forest being there for a while. And it's these people, these guys, who can actually mean that technology like this can be super useful. One of these devices can protect three square kilometers of forest because we can hear sounds pretty far away. There's 15,000 tons of CO2 in that forest, equivalent to 3,000 cars off the road. Which means that this guy, this guy right here, just protecting his own backyard, can have more effect than dozens of engineers working on alternative energy. And so we have to build technology to help these people do the jobs that we want them to do, because they can be so, so effective. Uh, that's just one story. We've done this all over the world, um, 14 countries uh, all over the place with three thousands of square kilometers of forest protected. And again, uh, we're in this rate of expansion right now, uh, thanks to Google and some others. Uh, and these stories are just this one example. Again, you saw this one here, uh, stories in Peru. Uh, stories in Indonesia where they, uh, they make busts all the time. And we're seeing this expansion of uh, effectiveness of this technology and people being able to adopt it. Um, but again, it's not just about catching loggers in the field, because that's only part of the story, right? We have live audio streams coming from hundreds of places out in the forest. What can we do with that? Well, any one of you can download our app and listen live to the sounds of the forest anytime you'd like. Because we think this, this is a real asset that can help to protect the forest in and of itself. And if you listen, you can hear lots of really cool stuff happening. And it turns out that AI can actually help us figure out what's happening there in the forest. So here we have this tool we build. Uh, we're largely trying to use um, AI to pick out the subtlety of the different species interacting with each other in the forest. And this is what Google.org uh, came out to help us do. So we're listening now to Sumatra. And you'll see that first we detect a vehicle. Then we start to identify cicadas, crickets, gibbons. All this stuff comes together. And you can begin to really put together a map of the fabric of sound temporarily 
of what's happening in these really diverse places. And not just over a minute or an hour, but over months, years. These are big data techniques being used to uh, um, help us understand ecology. This is the, really the next step on the frontier of science uh, that really think could help us prove uh, that, uh, that the, the sound of our living planet could be one of the most effective ways to protect it. Um, and what about the things that they don't necessarily make noise? All right, so let's, let's jump in here. What can nature tell us about what's happening in the world? Well, uh, we had a, a model, an AI model to detect spider monkeys. And spider monkeys make a lot of noise all day long, right? Make a lot of noise all day long, but not at nighttime. So one time, we heard they were making a lot of noise at nighttime and tried to figure out what's happening there. Well, it turns out there was a big earthquake around midnight that woke all the spider monkeys up, which you can hear the earthquake in just a moment. Let's turn it up. Let's get the experience going. These trees move a lot. Okay, about this moment is when the monkeys wake up and they're like, what the hell is that? And so you have this huge surge of spider monkey vocalizations that indicates that something is not right in the forest and helps us figure out what's, uh, what's actually happening there. This is pretty brute force, obviously, but there's many other examples that we help to prove over time. Um, likewise, uh, Google uh, helped us sort of put together other, other applications for this. You know we focused on forests because that's really our, our forte. But uh, Matt Harvey, an amazing uh, data scientist here at Google, put together a, a model for detecting orcas and humpback whales. And it turns out there's a lot of orcas and humpback whales that come into Vancouver Bay. And Google has a partnership with DFO up there, which is sort of the equivalent of the Coast Guard that's sort of supposed to protect um, these areas. And so we applied that to be able to pick out orcas using sensors that were in that bay and through the exact same alert system that we used to, descend, uh, to send indigenous people off there to stop loggers in the forest, we were able to send the Coast Guard off to potentially um, keep ships out of the UA when orcas show up in real time in Vancouver Bay. These are pretty cool sounds. And just like chainsaws, this is not something that happens constantly. No one's gonna be listening to these things and wondering when the orcas are gonna show up. There needs to be some system, AI, that's able to pick these things out and get people there in the right moments. This interface that you see here is just the first step of a major project we've undertaken as part of this grant with Google that will allow us to connect ecologists, biologists, and enforcers like DFO and like the tribe you saw to the data scientists who can build amazing models to be able to help us understand and protect nature over time. So backing up again, let's go back to the forest real quick because again, we do want to sort of understand all of nature that's out there, but our forte is the forest. Uh, as part of the support that we get, we hope to triple our impact this year. Uh, 6,000 square kilometers of forest, that's one thing. That's, we're not responsible for these numbers. This is just what it means to protect forest. Millions of cars taken off the road, the equivalent, by protecting this much forest. But I think uh, that the most exciting thing for us as well is the amount of audio that we can, that we can gather with the system right now. 450 years of audio may sound like a, a ridiculous amount, but the insights that are within that, um, that's what's really exciting to us. We know we can pick out real new discoveries with a system like what we're building with Google, and that's gonna be really great. Um, one of our partners, uh, he tells us that it's just a really exciting moment, the combination of AI with bioacoustics, which is something that's old. People have been listening to nature for, for so long, but AI and bioacoustics together might lead to an era of discovery as important as the invention of the microscope. That's what we hope to uh, hearken forth with what we're building now, and uh, thanks for being a part of it. Reinforced Connection, let's talk. Nice